there is a risk that I will no longer be able to use the display and I will have to go... S okay, well that was interesting. I know this might seem like more of a niche thing, but some people need to know about this. So this is a Dell Inspiron N5010, not 5110, 5010. Um, this is not necessarily an affected model, but what's going on here, this, you see how the display, it, it looks really stretched out, like things just aren't quite right. <clears throat> the video driver is not installed. And if we go over here, we'll actually see, I just did an image drop, and if you look at display adapters here, basic display adapter. Now, the problem is, this is BIOS A04 from 2010. Sometimes, once Windows 10 is put on these and you install the video driver, this whole screen blacks out. So I am preemptively updating to A15 right now because if I don't, there's a risk with these old Intel chips, and it's been specifically these old uh, Dells, there is a risk that I will no longer be able to use the display, and I will have to go... S okay, well, that was interesting. And I'll have to go somewhere um, to make the video driver not work using recovery, like rename the driver file, and then install the BIOS update, and then put the video driver back, which is annoying, so I'm just going to do the update or destroy the computer. This is the worst thing about BIOS updates, is did, did, I, did I break this stupid thing? But anyway, I'm doing it preemptively because if I don't, then this computer may black out and I'll have a lot more pain. But if you run into a really old Intel graphics um, computer and you put Windows 10 on it and uh, it blacks out once the display driver's installed, that's what's going on. So I know this is probably not the best example given that I feel like I may have just bricked it. Who got, ah, who knows? Whatever, it's an old computer. Maybe I'll use it as a paperweight. So sure enough, Genius King over here trying to cause myself less problems bricked it. Um, I had to put the header file, you use slash write HDR file with the BIOS installer to dump the HDR file, stick it on a tiny flash drive, fat formatted, find the right port for it, dump the battery, unplug the power, hold end while you plug power in, well, we'll see if it gets fixed. I don't know. All right, boys and girls, so the trick was to rename the ROM file to n5010.rom, or not ROM, dot HDR, rather. Rename the HDR file. And uh, hold end while you power it up. Warning, BIOS recovery mode has been detected. Proceed with flash update. System firmware is being updated. Thank freaking God. So, yeah, I'm going to just bail myself out of this problem. Um... Yeah, should have updated in Windows 7 before throwing it out and putting Windows 10 on here. Le oopsie doodle. Look guys, I'm not going to say that I'm pissed off, but I'm really pissed off. Alright, you see this? I was doing a BIOS update, and I had the AC power plugged in, but for some reason, event log, kernel power, critical battery trigger met. And what does it do whenever the critical battery trigger is met? Why, it stops everything, shuts it down. Oh, no title for this reason could be found. Power off. Win log on, blah, blah, blah. Shut down, blah, blah, blah. So, yeah. Despite the AC power being plugged in, it said, oh, the battery's low. What kind of crap is this? And the battery's not low. Look at this. I've had this problem on more than one machine with Windows 10, particularly older ones. Look at this. There's no problem with this battery. In fact, I did a whole bunch of stuff to this computer yesterday on battery. No issues. So why is it... Yeah. Windows 10 rebooted in the middle of a BIOS update forcibly. You can't make this stuff up. You can't make this stuff up. Yep, the BIOS recovery worked. We're all good. Just nuked the contents of the SSD. And uh, we're going to get this thing set up to have a new owner. It's uh, not the fastest computer on Earth. It's a first-generation i-series, i3. So we're not winning any Speed Demon Awards up in here. Um, here's loading the Microsoft activation scripts that you definitely shouldn't use. Ha 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 ha. And uh, there you go. 
So while not an amazing machine, it is pretty damn good. Um, I'm probably going to install or use rather in Spectre to get the Spectre mitigations disabled. Go turn off a few more of those things under, uh, well, why don't we just show you? Why not? So, uh, in Spectre on grc.com, download. I'm still sick, by the way. That's why I sound like this. Here's Inspector. Meltdown protected. No. Oh, I've already turned them off. Okay, good. All right, let's leave that alone. Now, <clears throat> the other stuff. Here we go. Here's where it gets ugly. So, where are you? App and browser control. That's it. Exploit protection settings. This being an old computer, turn off control flow guard. And uh, let's see. I'm not worried about data execution prevention. That's just a flag. But validate exception chains and validate heap integrity. All of these require the system to do work whenever certain things happen inside a program. And uh, I don't like it. So, yeah. So we turn those off and we'll reboot the computer. Win X, U, R. And it should be a little bit faster. It's not an amazing difference, but everything helps. Ew, updates.